Hello, welcome to a new M5 Altium tutorial. I'm Chris, I'm joined by Jay. Hi everyone. And today we're going to be talking about uh, your BOM documents, which means Bill of Materials. So what that means is that when you are doing a PCB, uh, you finish, you're ready to order the PCB, obviously you're going to need parts to populate it. And creating a document that keeps track of all of those parts on DigiKey is not a trivial task. And especially with complicated boards, it can be like a really serious consideration. Luckily, Altium has built-in features that makes that really easy. So I wanna show you guys kind of how to use them in greater depth and then how to interface with DigiKey to make sure that your order contains all the things you need. So the first thing I'm gonna do, here's a sample design. Obviously you can, you can see that it's not finished, but uh, it's finished enough for this tutorial. So I need to right click here, add new to project, active bomb. So Active Bomb is Altium's kind of built-in bill of material management system. And the way it works is that it kind of keeps track of every part that you put down through manufacturer part search. So you can see on my schematic, this is my schematic. Uh, all of these parts came from the manufacturer part search, except for my connectors. I'm going to come back to that. And then when I go look at the bomb, uh, it actually put them all down and it put all the information it could source from the internet. So I have um, you know, the part numbers, I have the revision status, you know, actually a bunch of things I don't necessarily need. I have um, the prices, which are mostly up to date. They're not always exactly right, but they're pretty close. And so what I can do with this is create an order. Uh, before making an order, could you tell us what those red triangles are, please? Yeah. The so little warning signs. Yeah, so if you mouse over them, you can see some of these things have errors. They, they say no solution. And what no solution means is that there is no information that the program can source. So specifically, it's looking at these right here, which are my uh, inputs and output. They're actually just, if you look on my PCB, they're just these headers. So I didn't specify a part for those, and I got them from the generic component section instead of the manufacturer part search. So that means I'm responsible for finding those parts, and we're going to do that. Uh, first, I have to save this bomb document, so I'm going to call this, um, what am I calling this thing? Guitar input bomb. Cool. All right, so what do we do? So the first thing I want to do is make sure that I'm ordering from DigiKey. Um, you don't have to order from DigiKey necessarily, although it's definitely preferred uh, because it's, you know, it's going to make this easier, and I think that is what... Um, we are recommending students in Senior Design Project do this year. So the first thing I'll do is go to Favorite Suppliers List in my Properties panel. I'll click Edit. And then these are all of the places that I'm allowing uh, Altium to source parts from. So I'm going to deselect all of them, and then I'm only going to select DigiKey. So that's going to update my prices and links and uh, part numbers and, and everything else to make sure that what I'm pulling is coming from DigiKey. Then I'm going to get rid of the columns that I don't necessarily need. So I go again into properties, columns, and then let's pick the things that we want. And this process might take a little while, but it's worth it. So let me, uh, I don't want to block it with my video. Looks like it'll be okay. So what do we need? And the purpose of this panel is to customize what the output will be? Yes, exactly. So first of all, it's going to customize what you're seeing right here. And then it's also going to customize the file that we generate in the end. Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to output a CSV. You could also do an Excel file from Altium. And then we're going to directly upload it into DigiKey. But DigiKey doesn't need all of this information. For example, I don't think DigiKey cares about the revision ID or the revision state or the revision status. So let's go through. Uh, let's see, do I want comment? I don't think so. And I just clicked the, the eye icon to hide those things. So description designator, I actually do want those. And you'll see why later. Line number, um, we don't need that. Manufacturer one, don't technically need that. Manufacturer life cycle, don't need that. Manufacturer part number, I believe we do want. Absolutely do. Yep. Quantity, we do want. Revision ID, don't need. Revision state, don't need. Yeah, all the revision information we don't need. And it's up to you whether or not you want to keep these prices. Uh, I don't believe DigiKey needs them, 
but you can have them in there. It could be handy to have uh, if you go to save your document somewhere else, like on. You can always export a version for you, and export a version for a DigiKey. Right. Cool. So we've kind of cleaned this up. So let's see what the next step is. So the next step is to handle these parts that don't have links on them. So these are all going to be the same, except for one of them, I have a power connector, which I'm actually not going to supply a part for. That's okay. So let's go find an appropriate header. Let me grab a thing to search. Um, let's see, I found this part before just by Googling it. I want a quarter inch uh, jack on DigiKey. Usually you go through the DigiKey search, but I happen to know what I'm looking for. It's right here. Uh, actually, this would be even better. This is exactly the one that I want. So I will click on it. And then I'm going to find the information for it. So it's just called 12B from, Switch, from Switchcraft. That's fine. So I'm going to put this to the side. And then I'm going to go find one of these missing parts here. Whoops, I just resorted. That's fine. And then I'm going to hit Add Solution, Create slash Edit Manufacturer Links. And I'm going to go to Add. So we're adding our own link. And then I'm going to search it. And this is just like the Manufacturer Part Search, except I can now select, I mean, I could before, but we're going to select things that don't necessarily have models and parts, because all we really need is the link information. So let me search Switch Craft 12B. Is that it right there? That looks like a comparable item. Oh, here it is. That's it. So I'll say OK and OK. And you also it. use DigiKey's Digi Keys internal number there to search? Uh, yeah, I believe you can. So let me copy the DigiKey part number and let's try that on the next one. Uh, yeah, I think you can do that. Because if you know exactly you want this specific item listed on DigiKey, that's just there. Yeah, that's a great point. It's probably a little more reliable too. Um, but at least you can see, yep, there it is. You can see that either way will work. So you can actually add multiple solutions and you can remove them. So let me remove that old one. This is actually a good opportunity to, to show that we can do that. And then let's make sure we're using the same one. Cool. And then I will say, uh, okay. And okay. So you may have to go through and do this for multiple different parts. For now, I think that's all I'm going to do. I think I'll leave the power and the sampling output without a connector because I'll just solder directly to those to those holes. Cool. All right. So what's next? So now we need to actually upload this thing to DigiKey. So we're going to go to Reports, Bill of Materials, and then this is going to export our CSV. So here you can see the window you get. There it is. Again, we can customize it a little bit. Let me set this to CSV. And then let's say export, and I'll just put it right on my um, right on my desktop. And I'll say OK. So that's it. So now we're going to move over to DigiKey. So I'm already signed in on my account. If you have an account, you should sign in on it. If you don't have an account, you should make one. And I'm going to go to Bomb Manager. So I'm going to say Upload Bomb. And then I'm going to find it right here. And there it is. So this is the thing that we just exported. And DigiKey is going to ask us to actually input, um, you know, what each of these columns are. Because it doesn't, sometimes it can read, like you can see here, it figured out the manufacturer part number. And then sometimes it doesn't. So for the description, we're going to set that to customer reference. And then for the designator, we're going to set that to reference designator. We don't need to specify the prices. If you don't specify the columns, it's just not going to refer to them at all. And then we want to make sure first part record begins on row four. Row four is this. So it's going to skip these ones that don't have parts. That's great. Now I'm going to say add to bomb. And there it is. So now I can give this, you know, this, it's, it's going to call it a bomb. Um, I can give this bomb a name in DigiKey that's specific to my DigiKey account, and I can save it on DigiKey. And then when I want to order PCBs and build them, I can order multiple copies of this, which I think DigiKey calls assemblies. 
So there's one thing you always need to check when you do this, and here it is right here. You're gonna notice that two tiny little surface mount capacitors cost me $7.30. That is ridiculous because it's selecting DigiReal packaging. So you're not going to use DigiReal packaging unless your part is somehow getting made on a pick and place machine, which I'm almost sure it's not. Uh, and even then, often you can get away with cut tape. Just check with your manufacturer. Exactly. So we're going to use cut tape. And then would you like to update all sim similar packaging to cut tape? Yes, definitely. So that just went from $7 to $0.30. Cents, and it's going to do that for all the other parts. And that's going to make a huge difference. So now the final price of one of these PCBs is $20, which is fairly expensive, but it seems to make sense. So like I picked a $5 trimmer, which is not- It's also gonna be more expensive because you only have one copy of this board. So you're being charged the highest price per item of all the different price tiers for like a capacitor. Once you order more, it'll give you the discounts for larger order quantities. That's right. If I was to make a thousand of these boards, DigiKey would automatically discount a large set of my parts, which is exactly what Jay's saying. One thing I noticed is that it added this part twice, even though it's the same part. So I'm gonna put a comma here, put the other designator, which is GTR. And then I am going to set my quantity to two. And then I'm going to delete this. And that just cleans up my bomb a little bit. I don't want to necessarily have more items than I than I need. So that'll be good. And then I'm actually going to change this customer reference to uh, Cable Jack, because that makes more sense. And I, I could have done that in Altium 2, but it's fine to do it here. Uh, it really doesn't matter now that we're done with Altium. So we're going to say, uh, enter assembly, or sorry, that's not what I want to do. Uh, I want to add to cart. And then this is where you set how many you want. So let's say I order five of these things and I want some extra parts in case I lose some pieces or mess something up. Maybe I'll order six of them. And I'll say add to new cart, add to cart. And that's really it. Do you have any tips for naming your uh, assemblies? You mean naming the bombs? Yeah, naming them in DigiKey. Um, yeah, that's a good point. I would probably try and keep the names as close as I could to uh, what what you were doing in Altium, so that there's no like discrepancies between your all your files in Altium and all of your bombs in DigiKey. And I mm -hmm. would definitely choose good, specific, unique names so that it's easy to refer back to these things. And you might consider adding a revision number. So if I find a mistake on this board and I need to reorder the parts, I might make a new bomb and call it revision two. So one thing I want to point out is this is exactly what Jay was talking about. If I order six resistors, it's going to cost me some price. However, you can see if I order 10, it's actually a better value because it only adds five cents uh, and I get four more when the unit price for each one is 10 cents. So that's an improved value. You'll get other ones where maybe if I was ordering nine, it would actually be cheaper to order 10 because it would qualify for a discount. So DigiKey is going to bring those to your attention. You can choose whether or not you want to use them. Uh, in this case, I don't need four extra, although I guess five, what is it? Oh, it's five tenths of a cent. I'm sorry, five cents. Couldn't read there. Uh, whatever, I guess I'll just do it. Can't hurt to have some extra. And if you're ordering multiple PCBs, uh, it's a good idea to keep these extras somewhere and then you have like a, a, you know, a supply of extra resistors in case, you know, anything ever happens over time, these will build up and could be handy. Here's one where I save a bunch of money by actually buying more. I often order at least, so order at least 20 extra resistors. Yeah. Just because they're so easy to lose. So and I'd go. suggest doing that. So for six boards, it actually only came out to $70, which means that the price did indeed go down. Uh, and the price per board, I'm not going to do the math, but you can see it's much less than $20. And then I can name this card if I want to. Um, let's name it Guitar Input PCB Rev 1. Cool. And then I think most of you know that from here you need to click Cart Share. And that's going to give you a link, which you can then send to whoever's going to order the parts. So is there any other big things I need to hit in this video, Jay? Or do you think that pretty much clears it up? No, I think you covered it quite well. Cool. 
Um, one thing I would suggest from here is to... Uh, except, except. Order extra connectors if you're going to be physically connecting them to another device. Often those are easy to break. Yeah, that's a great point. You definitely want to consider as much redundancy as, as you can afford. Um, one thing I will say is that you can hit download here on DigiKey. This is great because um, you know we changed this cart a little bit since we exported it from Altium. So now with a new CSV, which I can save, I can store that in uh, Google, uh, yeah, Google Sheets. And that's handy because, uh, you know, sometimes DigiKey isn't the most reliable. You might have trouble signing in. Their services might be down. Um, maybe you didn't save a change or something. It's nice to have a backup, which is a spreadsheet, which you can customize and include a cart share link in. It's kind of a nice way to do things. So uh, consider downloading the CSV from here and then taking that to a different place to store it. It's also great extra material for presentations, and it can help illustrate your project. Yeah, that's a good point. If you're presenting your cart, you might prefer to have it as a spreadsheet as opposed to a DigiKey link, which is not very uh, official looking. So I think that's it. Thanks for watching. If you have questions, please contact us. We can help you through this process. Uh, this is not the most fun part of making a PCB, but it is probably one of the most important. So best of luck, and thanks for watching.